Uh, welcome to the 15th edition of uh, International Documentary and Short Film Festival of Kerala. And today we have with us a person who needs no introduction. In fact, she is known by different titles, but uh, I would like to refer to her as an exceptional and acclaimed actress who has actually redefined the borders of Indian cinema. She's also known as the queen of OTT. She's also known as somebody who has actually broken the glass ceiling that separates mainstream and critically acclaimed performances. And uh, she's known to us through different roles. But um, in fact, I remember watching her in Monsoon Wedding. And the circle has come almost, you know, uh, it has become a circle when she has actually made a role reversal in uh, last stories where she has become the boss who makes a voyeuristic attempt at her domestic help. So, um, ma'am, welcome to Kerala. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for being here <laughs> instead of sleeping in the afternoon. <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you for the glowing introduction. Uh, I feel uh, like a fictional character you have described. It doesn't sound like me at all. <laughs> but thank you. Ma'am, you have such a great fan following in Kerala. Especially after Sir, you've almost become like a household name. Well, I'm a huge fan of Kerala for reasons that are, well, I think quite apparent. Uh, there's freedom of thought and true appreciation for cinema. This festival is, I think, one of the most incredible festivals because it's only about cinema and none of the other things. Uh, so thank you for loving cinema and it's because of all of you that we can do the work that we do. Thank you. Ma'am, in your um, very short and sweet introductory speech, you know, during the inaugural ceremony, you said that film festivals has actually given me a wider canvas. It has actually defined me as a person. Uh, so how do you look at film festivals, whether it is international or national? And how do you um, look at these kind of scenario in Kerala? You know, everyone to feel safe needs a home, no? Films also need a home. And uh, the kind of cinema I did was largely independent cinema, uh, which didn't have theatrical, uh, you know, release. So you make the film with great difficulty and then there's no home for it because there's no theatrical distribution. So how do people, uh, if you ha someone has to meet you, they need to know no, where you live. <laughs> so uh, if it wasn't for film festivals, uh, m the films I did would not have had a home where people could come and watch. And uh, not all films are going to be made in a budget and will have the kind of release strategy and distribution um, that commercial films do and mainstream films do. So what about the other stories, you know? And my career and profession was made up of those independent films. And if it wasn't for the appreciation of film festivals, uh, the world, the few people that saw it also wouldn't exist. And I don't think films can just be made in vacuum that no one watches. The audience is an important part of the, the a story. It, it's completed only when it's read. A film is completed once it's seen. So without that, it would just be an idea. You know? um, in fact, you know, when you look at the, uh, you know, the, the space of short films in the history of cinema, it has always been a poor cousin of mainstream films. Uh, and they always consider it to be something like, even in Kerala, we had a, a festival where short films were actually screened alongside with uh, feature full full length feature films. So it was only recently that we had a, re I mean, a separation of these two uh, genres. So, you know, you have acted in almost every genre, whether it is in the, you know, whether it is a series, whether it is a short film, you have got theatrical releases, you also had um, 
releases globally, but not acclaimed in our own home country. So how do you look at all that? And uh, how, will you, how do you look at a short film like Nayantara's Necklace, which is, I think, a, a, a favorite of everyone, especially when we teach uh, class divide and aspirations of the urbans, we always, you know, it is actually a referral point. So how do you look at that? Two powerhouse actors coming together in a short film, later being directed by her. Uh, how do you look at all that? Well, Coco and Tilo uh, combo. Uh, thanks to Joydeep Sarkar, our wonderful director who got us together, who's also a dear friend. Um, I don't look at um, I don't look at films with this idea that it's uh, what is whether it's short film, whether it's feature film, or it's for the web series, it's for film festivals, it's for mainstream. A character needs to be understood how she walks, how she talks, how she thinks, how she feels. That is more important to me, not where it's going to be exhibited and shown. Uh, my preparation is not going to change based on whether it's a short film or a feature length film, right? Yeah. So it's, uh, it's totally, uh, it has no impact on my decision to do it or in my preparation. The work is to understand, to give dignity to the character that I'm playing um, and to be able to understand her, her psyche and figure the flesh and bones of that character, you know. Yeah, I've never l looked uh, on, you know, deciding or thinking too much about whether it's a show. It makes no difference. The character has to interest me. The filmmakers what the filmmaker is trying to say uh, is more important. Yeah. You've also done these kind of experimental films and also independent films, you know. I think you were the poster girl of, uh, you know, independent cinema in India. So um, you've never felt a divide like that? you never thought of it that way? Divide between? Between, I mean, the mainstream, uh, the Bollywood, you know, like that. Well, see, the divide exists. But what are you going to do about it? You can either complain about it and become bitter and cynical, or you can um, just keep working on the opportunities that come your way and slowly, slowly build bridges. At the end of it, we are telling stories. I don't want to be a poster child of anything. I'm just a working professional who loves what I do. and. I don't want to say never to anything or make any such decisions about whether, oh, I'll never do mainstream or I'll not do independent cinema anymore. I just want to do OTT. No, it, it has to be uh, the story that, and, and, and the script that is king and queen. Yeah, and the only factor in deciding whether I do a project or not is the director, their integrity, their creativity, the clarity of their vision, and my sense of fe my feeling a sense of safety with them. Because if you're safe, then you can creatively fly. You know, these are the decisions. Divide divide exists between low budget and high budget. You know, uh, but whether something will become successful or not, that no one can say. You know, so those are, I don't even I'm not even concerned about it. You know, you are, uh, you know, there's something called the subtlety of performance that you bring in all the characters that you portray. Uh, but Sir is something very different. You know, so there is a, there is something naive about her. But there is also the concept of fears, um, you know, the opinions that she gives. She's also gentle, but at the same time, she has a very strong uh, concept about everything that she sees around. So how do you bring about these nuances into your performances? How do you make them extraordinary? I'm not making them extraordinary. It's the director, the editor, the cinematographer, the entire team that edits out all the bad stuff that you have done so that none of you see it and uh, only keeps the good stuff so that you are. You say all these nice things about me in film festivals like this. Uh, so there's a whole team of people who you don't see who are working very hard so that a few of us uh, can, uh, you know, hear all these, but it's not true. You know, there's nothing more collaborative and more humbling than making a film. If you could do it alone, 
I mean, then one can take all this, you know, but you can't. Every, every person on a crew, when they know, you know, the best projects which are rare is when every person in the crew is aware that they are part of something bigger than just themselves and their job profile. And Did you expect such an overwhelming response for Retna? I don't expect anything. <laughs> I have learned in the last 22 years of waiting and having very little work. You know, this work that has come my way has only happened in the last three years. Before that, it was one film every two or three years if I was lucky. I have not expected anything. Uh, I learned to be able to manage my frustration, my disappointment, and uh, because I realized that if this is something that I truly love doing, then I will have to develop resilience and patience that it will take time for me to prove uh, to producers that I'm a worthy bet, that they can bet their money on me. I will not waste it. I'll do my everything to understand and dignify a character that the director trusts me with, gifts me with. How it will be received, how it will do, I'm not even, honestly, I'm not concerned. Because that's the future. So what about all those awards that you have won abroad and also here? You know, the award is getting the job. When you wait for these many years to get a job that can make you, you know, can, that can make your heart start racing, that can twist your insides to understand, is this I even something I can do? And how, how do I... Um, how do I do the training? How am I going to prepare myself? That, you, that those opportunities were so far and few that the award was always getting the job. Getting prizes and all is like, um, it's okay, you know? And I mean, of course, until I didn't get it, uh, once I got my first one, I was like, ah, chalo, <laughs> hai. Ye ego ka massage ho gaya. Uh, but no, I really like, I give them all away to my parents. They are more excited about the uh, uh, awards and then they'll talk to their friends and family and show off. And it's very sweet. It gives my parents who have worked so tirelessly to give me the education, the freedom. Uh, it matters to them. Uh, and but for me the award is in getting to work with uh, filmmakers that I admire and respect their trust in me is the highest award and I'm not at all being humble about it because the uh, there are you know so many factors on why uh, you know why your performance is liked or celebrated and it could be something that is just people it's like the trend of the time it's a seasonal thing you know that today people like the color orange tomorrow they will like green you know and so they may like not like you know uh, white is the rage or you know um, a certain actor can just be like the flavor of the times but these are very changing things, awards, what is what is working, what's not working, and what is successful and what is not successful. Um, these are very, very, kya bolte hai? like a mirage, you know? So I can't, I, yeah, the, it doesn't hold. Okay, you're not carried away by any of that. No, it's not about carried away. I can't, you know, it's like a, a appreciation is wonderful and makes you feel good. But, I, you know, it's really you know, the... Uh, actually, when you won the film fair for Sir, we were very excited because, you know, it was the first time you ever, uh, you know, the, you know, you talk about nepotism, you you talk about the same tribe coming again and again, you know, you, we were so excited that you got that award. Thank you so much. I was also very excited. Uh, but my reasons were slightly different. Um, my mother... So, uh, we had just got the news that my mother's cancer had spread uh, all over the bo her body and uh, I had to go, go leave Bombay and go to Calcutta uh, with this heavy news and 
that is when I was nominated and I thought that if I go and if I do win, it will distract my parents um, and give them some distraction, some respite from, you know, the reality. And I'm very glad because uh, they were super excited. And, uh, <laughs> you know, so for me, the film fair is actually, uh, um, um, you know, it's my, uh, it was more for my parents who have never, who have just worked so hard to uh, give us, you know, uh, so much love and so much support that uh, my brother and I uh, are able to do what we want. How many people, you know, from a middle class family can decide to be actors, which is so unpredictable. You don't even know whether, you know, how you're going to make it, how you're going to pay your rent. And my parents just had so much faith in, in our dreams. And, and gave us that without any pressure, anything that, oh, you know, you should do a job where you can make money. And didn't make any money doing theater, doing independent cinema for years. Never heard it from them that, you know, do you want to do something where your future can be more secure? It was always appreciation, always encouragement. So for me, that film fair was for them. You know, and I was very happy that I could give them that in while they were alive, and you know, and I'm so happy that my mother is, you know, doing well and responding well to the treatment. That is my biggest gift. Yeah, that's, that's so nice to hear that yeah. your mother is getting to be okay. Yes. Um, you know, ma'am, um, we talk about characters written by women, especially men written by women. You have Zoe Akhtas and Rima Khadgi's men. You, you call them like that. Uh, you have Vicky Kaushal in Razi. Meghna has written that. So um, how do you even, uh, you know, um, the character in Sir was written by a woman, directed by a woman. So how do you look at this um, mm -hmm. women writing for men and uh, men writing women? Have you ever felt that gender? No. Never. No. I think sensitivity is gender agnostic. I think being able to look with the character rather than looking at the character. So it's one gaze is, you know, people talk about male gaze, female gaze. I'm very bored by that, you know. I think. It's Must the game. Tired of hearing that about me. Yeah, no, I, I, because I genuinely feel having worked with incredible, like incredible directors like Anup Singh, you know, uh, and and working with incredible directors like Konkona. Um, between so one is a man, one's a woman, and they're dealing with extremely complex gender, uh, you know, issues. Um, but what I feel is. This one is when you look at a woman, the chance of you objectifying her, you know, you're looking at her. And the other is the camera is, the camera is almost like looking with the woman or the man. So you get a sense of the complexity of the person as opposed to an objectification. And that sensitivity, it's gender agnostic. Either you have it or you don't. It's like certain qualities like in Ratna, in Sir, um, it's not about rich or poor. She, there was a certain, her kryptonite was her sense of dignity. Now, can you buy dignity? Whether you have money or you don't have money. Now, there are many people who can have a lot of money, but are not dignified at all. You know, so there are certain things. Uh, there are certain experiences which, um, Which again, like I think different, you would think that a woman, man wouldn't understand or a woman would understand better and that's possible. But whether that translates into, because a film is not made by just, you know, a director has write, a, write, a writer's room, many people who uh, advise. And so whether male or female, if they're really interested in creating a, uh, a story, 
that is sensitive, that is complex and layered, uh, they will go beyond their biases. Inbuilt, we all have our inbuilt biases and prejudices, you know. They'll go beyond it. They will talk to people. So let's say it's a man telling a story about a woman or a woman telling a story about a man. But if you're interested in understanding the complexity of the, the you know, the story, the issue, the, uh, what is being explored, then you will, you will uh, reach out to the corners of the world to make a, uh, make a story that is, um, that has layers, that is not oversimplifying, you know. And I don't think it is, I think men can do it, women can do it, women can make terribly insensitive and uh, didactic films, uh, you know. I don't think it's about gender. It really comes down to that personal sense of responsibility and your openness to knowing that you don't know everything. You know, um, when we think of all the characters that you have portrayed, we there are so many characters that stays with us forever, like Ratna and, you know, uh, the characters in Death in the Ganja and all. But I've always felt that, you know, you must have been emotionally taken by the character in Kisa. You know, you have the girl who is brought up as a boy. Um, did that character affect you emotionally? Or are you emotionally affected by the characters that you portray? You know, before I met my partner, my husband, uh, I think I had a lot of free time to think about a lot of nonsense. So I would be this actor, tortured by the parts I'm playing. <laughs> and uh, I, it's, uh, you, I really don't advise it at all. Okay, there's, it is at the end of the day work and there's your family life and many, many other things a human being has to do, you know. Uh, I think acting like any other profession is a job. And as human beings, we have to be responsible to our neighbors, our society, our family and work is one aspect of my life. This understanding of leading a more balanced life is something that uh, is, is a paramount value to me now. And I don't bring my work home. Uh, but yes, when I am preparing for a film, I am, um, I give it a lot of time. The, pre the preparation period is, you know, it's really hard work. I mean, that is when you have to find a cave for at least, you know, a big part of the day. Uh, uh, now, coming to Kissa, uh, it was uh, not a film that was emotionally like I brought it back home and I felt low or anything like that. But uh, there was a depth to Anoop Singh that I had not encountered in anyone. And he opened uh, something in my life, you know, which was uh, beyond the pages of the film and the script. He opened my life to looking at um, a human being's relationship to the universe. You know, a performance was not just between two actors. Uh, like he would, he taught me so many things. Like when you're doing a scene, it's not just you and the co-actor. Uh, but what is around you? You know, the mountain, the trees, uh, the home, the walls, the bricks that make the home. Can you become aware of, of everything that is around you, you know? And that awareness of being able to, that there are many, many factors in this, in this room, for instance, you know? Uh, that awareness of just beyond, uh, you know, the, the performative of saying your lines and reacting and action reaction beyond that and this larger dialogue that a human being has with you know the universe in a in a scene uh, and so many things about looking beyond these gender binaries that we have what is male what is female walk like a man behave like a woman which one which woman my mother and her sister are two different women. My father walks in a certain way, my brother walks in a certain way. How do I be a man? Who is a man? You know, these film, uh, that, that, these questions, um, I think, are, 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 and, and the explorations in this film, where does violence come from? 
uh, when we are so hell bent on creating these divisions man woman this country that country this border this philosophy that philosophy they us you know these boundaries no when we want to hold on to these boundaries and define you stay here you stay there this is the start of uh, got to ask a question like you know uh, we in kerala has got this great affinity for anything that is bengali we even have people who have actually studied bengali just to read tagore in the original bengali so how bengali are you uh, or you know, and i'm and i'm scared to ask that question because you are talking about you know borders are you know fluid please don't be scared at all uh uh you can ask me anything you want uh and if i know the answer i'll answer otherwise we have many people here they'll answer uh right you guys will help no <laughs> if there's something uh so um how bengali am i i don't think i'm very bengali i have parents who are bengali uh i was born in calcutta i lived there for four years and my father was in the air force so every four years three four years we moved to a different place i started learning the language there just when i was beginning to feel comfortable we moved to another place again i was an outsider there and just when i started to get comfortable we moved to another place so the sense of identity being something that never really my sense of self was never thankfully not a monolith that this is who i am i don't even still know who i am because i'm carrying so much uh, so many fragments of so many languages uh, people memories food you know lived i think i really got a sense of a secular india that we used to talk about you know uh, where all festivals were celebrated with equal abandon and so that was life yeah I, and and it's still you know in in many ways uh, i i don't know how to identify with uh, with just one place i mean i th- i think i have to thank my parents for that you know and uh, but yes i mean of course we speak bangla at home and my parents are now living in calcutta so that's that's home now but does that make me bengali enough for uh, you know i'm sure there are people here in kerala who uh, perhaps can speak the language read and write far better than I, me so they are probably more bengali than i am <laughs> yeah um, you know um you were a uh, you know power packed actor in 2001 definitely because we have seen monsoon wedding you were a power packed actor in uh, 2023 with last stories but there is an evolution of an actor something has happened over the years and what was the journey like how have you evolved as an actor mm, these journey questions are hard no how how to say 20 so plus years of journey um oh, no um how have you evolved you know what was that evolution i, I like? don't know if i've evolved mm-hmm. i hope i don't know there's no guarantee uh I will say one thing that I'm more patient. Uh I am more open to failure. Not getting it right doesn't hurt me as much as when I started. Uh, my first film was shot on film 35 mm and uh film was so expensive that before a take we rehearsed 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 and then the camera comes on and the whole crew the cast have to come together like one body and it's like a whole room takes a breath together it's like one <sighs> cut was that exhale that you that feeling of that you prepare 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 for that moment because you can't waste by saying oh oh i forgot my line can we do it again which you know digital gives you that kind of uh, freedom but also can make you complacent so that sense of um that sense of discipline that came from having thankfully experienced shooting on film realizing the value of the crew and uh, 
and, and and you know time you know to value time on set uh, because uh, monsoon wedding was that first experience and that was the you know the ethics with which the film was shot it became a very valuable uh, you know way to look at uh, cinema for me even though the world changed to digital and many working practices changed because you could afford to make take more takes and you know um so i think in terms of uh, evolution and change yeah i i feel uh yeah i think i'm more resilient and i'm more patient but it's not only because of doing films it's because of life uh so when a, a script comes your way what are the things that you look for what excites you in a script because i have read somewhere that you know when the role of uh, in tooth pari you know when that uh, character was offered to you 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 asked the director <laughs> did you actually call me by mistake you yes know? Ah. yeah So uh, this is a dancer I've not danced in my life nailed that role. Uh, and urdu uh-huh. i barely can you know i've worked for 20 years to make my hindi okay and just when i'm feeling comfortable with hindi urdu uh-huh. i was like it's a joke uh-huh. you know i am this confused identity person with a confused conflicted identity and but he had so much faith he said uh, i feel like you can learn I said, okay, I would love to learn. Then you see on set <laughs> whether I've learned or not. It's, you know, so I had Urdu classes, I had Kathak classes, and I think this is what I love about my job: the fear and excitement of learning something you don't know, and that ability to take that leap of faith mm-hmm. that I may fail, <laughs> but I'm going to die trying. You know. that uh, is very exciting also i want to know i know what 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 was your feeling like you know when you were playing antagonist for the first time in delhi uh, crime series um you know uh, we, we couldn't relate to karishma after seeing ratna you know it was such a big shock for us because we have this demure very you know sari clad uh, we we in malayalam call that pop the pavam character uh, and suddenly you have the villain so you know what was this transition like you know and did you actually relate to that character yes i related yeah. to her absolutely it was refreshing to not play someone who is pavam and morally always upright and on you the right know what side is of the right? yes yeah. very much very much like very much even before you told me i know it's different from payasam i know what <laughs> pavam is so and i was honestly bored of just being playing these characters that are you know morally uh, upstanding sincere tragic intense uh, i wanted to uh, my husband is a very funny man i wanted to do comedy and horror and <laughs> action and you know so for me doing karishma was so much fun also i really relate to it i relate to certain not the violence uh, i don't condone that in any form but what leads to the act of violence how did society fail women like karishma where women are not given a chance to articulate their dreams she had dreams she was not allowed why because of the class she belongs to because of her gender because what was expected of a woman is to give birth to a child as a woman i have never wanted to give have this you know this purported magical experience of childbirth it's not something i've ever connected with does that make me less of a woman what society judges us so right but i have parents who are okay i have a partner who's okay absolutely okay and very supportive of that decision to not want to be a to not want to give birth but karishma didn't have that choice what happens when a woman's dreams are are, are shattered where she has no agency to decide whether she is going to carry life for 9 months what happens maybe some women will just accept it because this is pa- this is patriarchy this is mm, you know it's what it is but are you saying that a woman who rebels against that who feels trapped by that whose claustrophobia who who sense of claustrophobia with these kind of societal expectations make her burst 
I I had full empathy for what the things, the factors that might have led to the act of violence. I do not condone violence. You know, I I, I studied drama therapy and I worked in the pr- in in a prison in New York called Rikers Island. I have tremendous regard for the men and women I met there, who have committed, uh, you know, crimes, uh, acts of violence. And yet, when you rewind and look at their life, what food, shelter, support, love, the absence of it. I don't think you can judge it. It's a very fine line between being guilty and being innocent. Uh, you know, uh, and I I felt for her. Yeah. We loved her, but it was just such a far cry from what you used to portray in some yes. of the other roles. I think that's uh, a, it's a commendable performance indeed. I don't think like you know there 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 are some actors I met um, I- you know in. in the northeast uh, who felt that they can't portray negative characters because they are role models in their community and uh, uh, it would you know oh, be okay. and i don't agree with that uh, because uh, you know the job of us as actors we are not uh, you know moral policemen we are trying to understand the human condition so Uh, one should be able to feel empathy for uh, any human being that i mean i i i mean i think that's that's the beauty of art and for us to have empathy without judgment to have understanding no beauty of not being trapped in that image you know you yeah i mean like these are characters i'm playing and anyway in real life also i'm not it's not like i'm pavam you know i lose my uh, you know i get angry i get frustrated i feel jealous and envy and all those things defeated frustrated yeah you know so that's a myth right it's what society wants to believe that's a, it's easy for uh, i guess society to deal with quote and quote power women you know i put her in a shelf a shelf yeah you know so obedient and Yeah, I yeah. think you have been trying to break that image from the right from the first film onwards until uh, last stories. I mean, the the segment called Mirror. Now, what are the things that are coming up in the future? When do we get to see you again? Whether it is OTT, whether it is a mainstream, whatever it is, we just love to watch you on screen. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is means a lot because after I hope you know that you know you are part of our academic. Uh, discussions and discourses also because we have <laughs> papers uh, yeah oh. uh, retna as a you know urban domestic help you know and 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 uh, you know parallel studies and with mirror i think you will have even more papers coming up because you know you have a role reversal and how you look at that you know as an actor also so um, so your academic material <laughs> great i don't feel so bad now about the phd that i didn't do and came back to acting um um uh, sorry i forgot the question no i was just asking you what are the things that are coming up the way ah yes uh, a few more projects that i've completed on uh, for the ott uh, because apparently film is they say cinema is dead so mm-hmm. films to uh, i haven't done mm-hmm. but uh, quite a few shows on ott that i have done okay. which are going to come out soon we wish you all the luck for all Thank your you. future endeavors we are looking forward for that and before Thank that um, i mean the we have some some crazy fans out there say crazy. they like to ask see she's questions. judging you guys <laughs> <laughs> crazy uh, you can have some questions with uh, our uh, ma'am uh good afternoon ma'am rudra here so my question uh, to you is like how you like uh, how can you avoid being typecast because it's a question asking as an i'm also an actor so there is a role which a romantic lover kind of that people once the people saw 
that films then director comes with the approach of such kinds of role which we as an actor try to avoid because we want to try different roles so wh- how what is the approach for that you can't control the way people look at you you can only control your own curiosity and appetite for different things so people may want to typecast you in the work that you do but uh, if you have interests that are diverse please please seek it out because if you are going to plunge yourself in different different things that interest you that all that richness will start reflecting in your own life you know garbage in garbage out right so what you put in is what will come out people may not see what you're putting in but whatever you're engaging with whether it's like for me whether it was my obsession with gardening or embroidery or things that required tremendous amount which were detail oriented covid put me covid the suffering of people around the number of people who lost their lives it created a tremendous sense of anxiety and panic in me and i i i found myself looking and searching for things that would calm me down you know so for me whether growing something uh or you know doing embroidery which was very time consuming but you when you are doing embroidery you can't think about anything else you know and uh, it, it this this idea of this tactile experience of so just to give an example or cooking uh uh you may think how does that have anything to do or the books you read going and meeting for me uh, my my life changed with just being so interested emotionally interested in older people you know spending hours with them uh all this that you 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 experience that richness of your life will come out in whatever role you play you will not play it in the way any other person will play because you are living your life so live your life have beca- and then with time people will begin to see you know the different things you can do but if you are going to just have this mujhe hero banna hai uh fir woh that that you know it'll be that one shade you know but the more interest you have in your real life your uh, you know the parts that you will attract it's cause and effect you know i feel thank you ma'am thank you so much thank you hi ma'am uh, first of all let me tell you that i'm a big fan of yours ever mm-hmm. since i first saw you in sir and since then Uh, till last stories uh, whenever i see your name in the cast it automatically generates an interest in me i see uh, like most of those characters are very memorable that's the fact that i like the most about you in fact i saw kissa in this very theater complex as part of the elder sibling of this festival international film festival of kerala ah, like the elder sibling that's really sweet uh, shaji yeah <laughs> uh, okay so uh, i have three questions that are related to these uh, leaving memorable women characters in cinema first is that uh, for all the wim- aspiring women actors uh who don't want to be just like like he said type no, not type cast who don't want to be disposable uh heroes interest or item dance or just uh, there is easily replaceable instead if they want to create characters that leave an impact or that are memorable uh, what is the path they should do like you have made decisions and choices that led you on this path right so for aspiring uh, actors what what are the decisions that or what are the things they should keep in mind if they want to leave memorable characters and secondly uh, when it comes to creating these characters what is the contribution of a writer a filmmaker and an artist uh, what are the layers that they contribute and uh, lastly uh, like it's all related to creating uh, women characters only like uh, people here think that if uh, if women oriented cinema or female centric cinema with a women protagonist come that's going to change the perspective but i think uh, instead of just focusing on that uh, if we focus more on the characters like say kgf as a movie for example like if uh, take the women characters of that instead of just simply writing them as a two dimensional characters if we just focus on those characters itself we can create better women characters in in generic cinema not just women oriented cinema so the three questions are what are your tips to the actresses 
uh, <laughs> what are the th tips to filmmakers writers and artists in creating these characters and uh, the point of women or question you only uh, give the answer okay so okay okay, okay. that's it, that's it thank you you're right absolutely right yeah. we should there is no need to make female centric films let's make sensible films let let's make films where we show complex characters male or female you know there is a uh, you know uh, there is no need to carry so that's the last one first one i've forgotten tips i can't be prescriptive yeah because what works for me may not work for someone so i i also i didn't think when i chose a work oh it's going to be memorable how will i know whether you are going to remember it or not not in my control what i i chose uh, i if i didn't relate to the part if i found the woman in that i was being offered to play was regressive uh, i said no now somebody may feel that i cannot afford to say no because i need to pay my rent or my mother's hospital bills there is no there is no judgment you have to make the choices that you make you know and i don't think there's anything i you know that you can't do or you shouldn't do i had the uh, i had you know at, at that point in time zero responsibility in my life so i could choose to be the quote unquote artist uh and i was a student living with my parents so i i could choose to make those decisions um you know i at 44 right now i don't have that i have to make money i have to take care of my parents so but at the same time i feel i trust that if i could spend 22 years doing what i could live with could go to bed with without feeling regret and hating myself i will be able to hold on to this but it's not something i would force on someone else no there's no judgment and it's okay to do a fully commercial film and do whatever you want to do as long as it works for you yeah second question the the contribution of a director writer and an actor the line between them is so blurred like i said you know earlier that we like in a good project in a good film uh it's one organism it's one entity led by the director film is a director's medium i think look for the space between white and black uh see if the scene can have again you know can't be prescriptive but it's interesting when you have two opposing forces in a scene i want to stay but i also need to leave it makes the body alive in in natya shastra there's a thing called tribhang this position you know where your let's say for example the top part of my body is like this way this side is this way this axis this axis and the head is on this axis you can't keep the tribhang for too long it is your body is literally going in three different directions and then when you can't take it any more how the body will fall no one knows it has to be it'll be a surprise for the actor the director and the audience who sees the film so if you can in the design of your uh, scene or your performance or you know find that that pull between opposing forces um then you can't predict you know what is going to happen it'll be and if you are surprised as a performer then the chances are that the person who's watching your film will also feel uh that's surprise yeah but i'm not a filmmaker so i you shouldn't ask me you know um hi ma'am 
again uh, thank sh- you for waiting <laughs> thank you and it it was a very elaborate answer as well my uh, question is i was introduced to your work uh, from is love enough sir and ratna is a very close to heart character so um, in one of the interviews uh, you had said about how you took a run before the lift scene to have that kind of uh, effect and all that so uh, it it will be very exciting to know the behind stories or how you relate to that character what relationship you have with ratna uh, so anything any information will be exciting <laughs> any is very it's a wide open field uh, i had to run because we shot the scene uh, uh, in the lift uh, getting into the lift you know and she had come from a long journey and she was sweating she uh, she was dancing sorry sorry she was dancing you know the ganpati dance and you know when you dance you sweat so that day we shot the dance scene and then she enters the lift on another day we shot the lift now how will i get that sweat which was from thursday sweat can't be on saturday no like oh how how i had to run i had to just run around the building till i was sweating as much as when i did the ganpati dance because the scene follows that now this kind of continuity you know the uh, when you are, uh, as an actor this a uh, continuity supervisor on set who looks at your costume continuity your action continuity um and as an actor you have to be aware of that as as well when you you know prepare for a part that uh, what's the scene before this where have i come from and where am i going uh and that awareness of that when you do the scene and uh, i mean that that's what i'm uh, adding on to what you were saying right now about the running scene uh, have you ever felt like you know running around the trees just like the typical bollywood kind of karan johar kind of films uh you know it could be something i've never done so it's for me as bizarre as the urdu and the kathak so why not uh and uh i never say never you know so yeah <laughs> running around trees if the tree is beautiful why not you know the tree has to be beautiful it's a quite a bleak landscape very frankly there are very few filmmakers who are able to make their films and get funding and uh, i don't uh, you know it may sound very unartistic to say this that i make films for the love of it no i have to earn a living i have a mother who's a can you know who's fighting cancer so uh, I mean I have a lot of filmmaker friends who I ha- have chosen to do a web series because that format has more funding currently than films because theatrical distribution is all in a flux right now post covid and theater shutting down and they just opened now so uh and yet at the same time I mean you know I've spent the first 22 years of my life doing independent cinema which had uh, uh which had some sort of funding I don't think it's possible to expect an entire crew forget the actors to work for nothing you know and uh, I mean la- largely uh, the independent films I've done has been through the grace of uh, uh, you know private funders who believed in the story and who wanted to support the director's voice uh, it's not going to it was never easy and it's never going to be easy and if you're still crazy enough to want to do it you have to really be crazy to do it to want to do it to be patient enough to do it you know and at the same time for me uh, a sustainable choice uh, you know has to be something where i 
uh, I've always had that, you know, and it was looked down on when I moved to Bombay because I would not work for free and I was told you're not a true artist. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I, um, uh, you know, I value myself and, uh, and I feel not just the actors, everyone on the crew needs to be paid. Uh, and, um, you know, there's something so vulgar. You're told it's vulgar to talk about uh, money, to have transparency, about funding, and whose money? And now, as I grow older, I it's not, uh, you know, someone is willing to pay me lots of money, uh, but then I'll find out wh what's the source of the funding. And if it's not sounding like the money I want to take, I will not do it. So... It's a complicated, it's a complicated, it's it's a business. Uh, and to be able to balance that, and there's a lot of, res we have a lot of responsibility as well. And yeah, I, I wish I could just tell you that, you know, go for it. But I know at what cost films have been made, at what personal cost. And, uh, and I don't think, uh, you know, your parents would be devastated, your family would be devastated if you made that one film and after that couldn't do anything because you were burnt out. So please look at this uh, as a healthy, uh, look at this profession in a healthy way. Please take care of your health, eat properly, uh, you know, have another job if need be. I did that for a long time. You know, I had, I did my double master so that I could always uh, earn and lead a dignified life. Uh, and if I didn't get films, I didn't have to do a film just because even if I thought it was very regressive and the writing very problematic, I could say no, not because my parents would fund my existence, but because I had qualified myself to earn from something else. You know, that, that is, and this, this, we have, like, it's, we have to think this through. You know, I don't think artists can be in this bubble of, ah, I'm an artist, yeah. Uh, you, you know, that's a thing ir irresponsible. And you will cause your parents a lot of worry, and I don't think it's uh, fair. Yeah. Uh, so, ma'am, it was a great pleasure talking to you. Thank you. And Thank on you. behalf of all the organizers of IFDSSK, uh, uh, I extend a heartfelt gratitude to you. It was such a pleasure meeting you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. you so much. Thank you, everybody.